Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to America once again and we're going to visit another state that I have never reviewed anything from and I had a great time in this state when I was over in America last time about nine years ago. Um, and this is yet another of the beers that I brought back with me from my trip in May of 2019. So a big shout out to Miles who very kindly donated this one to the channel. And I've had a little sip of this beer, I've not drunk a full can of it and I know that it's pretty good so I'm looking forward to doing an in-depth tasting for you here. So for this one we are going to go to Connecticut and we're going to a little town called Kent on the border with uh, with New York. So this is Kent Falls Brewing Company and this beer in particular is the All Alone with Everywhere to Go which comes in at 5.1% and it is a single hop paleo with Nelson Sovin which is one of my favourite kiwi hops actually. So really looking forward to doing an in-depth tasting for you as again as I said before a huge shout out to Miles who kindly donated this one to me to review for you on the channel and I hope that he enjoys this review as well and I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer also. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I'll do from Kent Falls Brewing Company. I do have one more of their beers to review just now and hopefully I can review some more beyond that but it might be a while before you see them again. There's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway to tell you a little bit about Kent Falls Brewing then on to my brewery notes. So Kent Falls Brewing Company was founded officially back in 2014 but it had been in the works for a number of years previously actually but the company was founded by Barrel of Benz and it can be found on a fully functioning farm out to the southeast of Kent in Connecticut very close to Lake, Wa to Lake Marawal if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I might get some of the pronunciations in this video a bit wrong but Barry founded the brewery with the idea of producing what he called old rustic farmhouse beers but he has a background in sales and marketing. He used to work for a savings bank down in Brooklyn in New York but he bought the farm back in 2012 along with a business partner and then he moved there in 2013. So he's joined at the brewery by Derek Dellinger who actually had become fond of beer while studying abroad in Prague because you've got all the different lager beers there of course and I had quite a good time when I was visiting there. But he had cousins who home brewed but it was actually a demonstration at a farmer's market that apparently gave him his calling and so he went and bought a home brew kit. He spent a good few years getting deeply into home brewing and he wrote about his experiments on his blog which was called Bear Flavoured. He was also very good friends as well with Evan Watson who's from Plan B Brewing in Poughkeepsie in New York and he'd met these he'd met him while living in Beacon in New York as well which apparently was a little bit of a haven for like artists and uh, entrepreneurs and also brewers too but it was through the blog that Barry discovered him and Evan pushed him to actually go and work in Connecticut with Barry but initially Barry wanted to call the brewery Food Cycle but a man by the name of John Suskovich was already the food cyclist and he basically cycled between different breweries and worked on farms across the country. He did this all the way across the US in a 5,500 mile trip at one point as well. But basically what happened was that John had emailed Barry during the paperwork stage of setting up the brewery but Barry deleted the email thinking that John just wanted to steal their idea of the name. But John cycled to the brewery one day and had a beer with, ba with Barry and he left uh, with the job of farm manager and now all three of them actually still live on the uh, the farm site today. But when the brewery was starting up, LeBens worked closely with the Connecticut Department Department of Agriculture because apparently there was no farmhouse brewery laws in Connecticut at that time and this and the massive infrastructure and renovation plannings that were going on on the farm premises at this time kept the brewery in limbo for a bit over a year actually. But they opened their tap room officially in June of 2017 and prior to this they had to actually do a lot of footwork to get their beer out there and known because the public just didn't have access to their facilities and um, but they were one of the first breweries in Connecticut to gain the permit to sell their beers at farmers markets as well. They were beaten by a 
another one whose name I forget according to the article that I read. In the first year they produced somewhere between seven and 800 BBLs and they focused mainly on farmhouse kind of sour beers and also IPAs as well. They grow their own hops on the farm, they've got chickens, uh, pigs I think as well, they produce eggs. Um, basically you know a fully functioning farm that sells all the products that you could think of from a farm and they've also got a large store of uh, different yeasts as well and if you look at the pictures of the brewery too it's a pretty impressive setup and their tap room uh, looks pretty nice as well too and of course you can buy all the farm uh, the farm products and stuff there too but as of June 2019 they've produced around 173 different beers a large chunk of these, as I mentioned, are IPAs, and there's different types of sours as well, such as Saisons, uh, Gretzers, and Gozes, and things like that too. So, um, yeah, um, a really interesting brewery, this one. I think this might well be my first farmhouse uh, brewery beer from America, if I remember correctly. I mean, I've reviewed somewhere in the region of 150, maybe 200 American beers, but as far as I can think, this might be the first uh, beer that I've brewed that started on a er, beer that I've reviewed that started on the farm. The only other one that might possibly possibly have been would be some of the Toplin Goliath stuff from uh, from Iowa. So um, yeah, check out this brewery if you get the chance, but I, I think they only really distribute to New York and to Connecticut at the moment, and of course there's very crazy kind of laws in America about taking beer uh, and distributing beer across the state lines because all the states have their different laws and that's what you get with a federal system, although that said, you don't seem to get the same kind of barriers in Germany, which is, uh, which is kind of interesting, and that is also a federal country too. But yeah, um, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then. I have to say I really like the artwork on this one. I've had it out of the can about five minutes. It's just a very hot day here in Sweden. We had 21 degrees uh, which was, was a bit crazy but there you can see Kent Falls Brewing on the top. Uh, you can see it looks like a little backpacker astronaut kind of thing and then the moon or the sun or whatever in the earth is there. Uh, is uh, is an eye. That's pretty cool artwork. I might. I'll need to try and pick the label off this one. I'm sure it'll come off quite easily later on. I can got a little bit of uh, one or two little dents on it thanks to the Chicago, um, the Chicago baggage handlers. But um, yeah, let's get it out and we'll get on with the tasting. And as I said, this one is a 5.1% uh, American Pale Ale. I'm assuming that it's a New England one. I did have a little sip of. It. I think it was a New England beer. This, uh, but we'll get it out and into the glass. I should also point out that this can is an American pint, which in normal people measurements, basically the metric system, that is 473 milliliters. So I've got maybe about two thirds of it out in the glass here at the moment. I'll just turn it around so you've got the nice astronaut there. So um, yeah, as you can see, if I hold this one up to the light, it's poured a really nice bright yellow kind of hazy colour. You can see there was about a quarter finger of a frothy white head there. It's actually turned into be quite a bumpy thing and it's going to fade away to be a very, very thin sort of foamy layer. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, it does look very, very nice and nothing particularly surprising about this one when you consider that it's a paleo and that it's from New England. So um, yeah, let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one. Oh yeah, that's really nice. Right, straight away with this beer, you're going to notice that it has a little bit of a, a kind of, when it's a, fa I've been talking about farmhouse yeasts and stuff, you're going to notice straight away with this one that it's a really, it's got a really almost it's not quite funky and sour, but it's just got a really big kind of yeasty um, malty presence to it. Um, it it's, it's really nice how that kind of comes across. It actually reminds me of Norway, and, and some of the Swedish breweries are taking on to it as well at the moment, and I think even some of the Danish ones. I live very close to Denmark, so I'm quite up to date on, uh, on Danish beer as well. But um, I'm noticing that this one, it actually reminds me quite a little bit of some of the Kvike, uh, IPAs that are coming out just now and Quake is a really old Norwegian farmhouse yeast and you can get some really lovely um, fruity flavours out of it and this beer really reminds me a lot of that. Now that reference is probably absolutely useless to those of you watching in America but um, this one uh, you know, it, to me, for those of you watching in Europe, this beer is very very similar to some of these Quake IPAs that a lot of um, brewers are trying and I'm, I'm sure it won't be long until that Norwegian yeast makes it out to America and they're playing with it as well but um, yeah it's got a lovely base to it this one I mean straight away you get those nice sort of wheaty um, you get that nice sort of wheaty white bready sort of thing there's a little bit of a, a kind of not a, I want to say it's a little bit like lemony as well you can smell some of the oaty creaminess I think in here too but it's quite subtle in that regard it really has a nice sort of um, I don't know if it's right to say astringency 
Now, English vocabulary has gone a bit crazy, but um, yeah, it has this, it does have a good little bit of a, a kind of lemony quality to it, this beer. It's almost like, um, it's almost kind of similar to a Saison, if you like. So this one is kind of, it basically is like a farmhouse paleo, this one. Um, it has that really, really nice base to it. There's a little bit of biscuity sweetness for me as well. Maybe a little touch of a slightly spicy note from the, the kind of wheaty side of the beer as well. But this was one of these paleos that really demonstrates how much um, the yeast can, um, can have affect a beer, you know, you can really, really smell it in the aroma straight away. So for me, wheaty base, some oaty creaminess in there, a little touch of biscuit sweetness, and then you get all of these slightly spicy um, things coming out from the yeast as well. It's, it's, it's really nice how the aroma goes together on this one. It's um, It has a little bit of that kind of lemony sharpness to it as well. On the green side of the hops, you can pick out the nice kind of floral notes in this one. It's quite a floral aromatic hop. Nelson Sovine, um, despite its kind of sort of smooth and quite juicy taste if you like, the white grapey qualities that normally get, it can give you a good punch of spicy floral aromatic notes if you brew it, if you brew with it in the right way. Um, you've got a nice bit of a kind of lighter grassy ester in there as well. And you've also got um, you've also got a little bit of that kind of white grapey note coming out also, which is, is really nice. White green grape, however you want to describe it. So to me, this comes across as a really funky um, is funk the right word? It comes across as a really nice, big, farmhousey, yeasty um, New England paleo. This one really reminds me a lot of the Quake IPAs that are um, making their way through throughout Scandinavia at the moment. I think I've even seen a couple of them being brewed in Germany now as well. But um, yeah, take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this beer because it is pretty unique. And from what I gather, um, this one. Uh, there are a couple of other breweries in Connecticut that are doing this, so I need to keep an eye on some of these. Um, these New England ones. I mean, Hill Farmstead is probably the name that everyone knows that does this kind of thing, but I still need to try some of their beers, in fact. So, um, yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and just see how we go. And it's always worth taking a bit of time to enjoy the aroma. So this is the All Alone with Everywhere to Go. I thought the name initially was uh, Nelson Sovine because that was what was on the front of the can, but this one is a New England Pale Ale coming in at 5.1% with the Nelson Sovine hop from New Zealand. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull, thank you again to my for making this review possible. Cheers. Yeah. It's really nice that actually. And one of the interesting things with this that I'm, I'm just sort of picking up now, when you take this beer in on the first taste, it actually gives the impression initially that it's very straight up. It's coming out later on, I think. It comes out more in the aftertaste, that sort of yeasty side of things, that nice yeasty complexity that this beer has. Initially, you're just going to think this is just a regular paleo, you know, a regular New England paleo, but then later on in the aftertaste, towards the front of the tongue, you start to get all those nice yeasty, astringent-y type flavours out of it, and it's, uh, it really is. Very nice, in fact. I like how this one goes together. So, you know, thumbs up to uh, to Kent Falls Brewing for this one. This is a really nice beer. <sighs> yeah, very easy to drink as well. But let's say uh, let's try and break down the um, what's going on in this one. So. On the flavour, I don't think it actually will tell you on the can. Usually in the European breweries, they tell you whether there's oats and things like that, like wheat malt and things. To be honest with you, when I've tasted this beer, I thought there was a bit of a notiness in the aroma. I don't know if there is too much in the way of a notiness in this one. If there is oats in this, it's a very, very subtle flavour. But then again, when it's got such a kind of prominent yeasty leaning, if you like, um, I wouldn't be, you know, the yeast can probably carry the beer rather than needing the oats to thicken it up, to be honest. But you can feel straight away with this one, you can feel a little bit of a pale malty quality there. I do think there's a bit of wheat in here, because um, you can taste the nice smoothness of the wheat. It comes out more the further you go into the aftertaste. Like I was saying earlier, towards the front of the tongue, that's where you're starting to get the slightly thicker yeasty notes. They're coming across as... I don't want to say, it's not quite as spicy as like nutmeg, but it kind of has the same kind of consistency as nutmeg. It just has a little touch of a slightly thicker, wheaty, spicy note. Um, I, don't, I, I don't think there's oats in this beer, if I'm honest. I don't think it's quite creamy enough for that. Either that, or there just, there's just been a very, very small addition of it. I'd be quite curious to know that, in fact. But a lovely pale malt base, a little bit of a thicker wheaty note on top of that, and some of the more doughy, yeasty notes coming out towards the front of the tongue. There's a little touch of a kind of biscuity flavour 
in the middle of your palette too which is nice but that's very subtle and it comes out a little bit more the further you go into the aftertaste but you know the the, the sort of malt base and yeasty kind of side of the thing because it all really blends together to be honest with you the malts and the yeasts um, it really has a very kind of nice and quite um, kind of, it has a really just nice background to it. It's really quite nice and sharp, to be honest with you. Or sharp's the wrong word. It's it, it's nice and eye catching, but on the mouth, I guess we could say that. But yeah, beautiful beer that. Um, on the hoppy side of things, then, um, back corners of the palate, there's a teensy little bit of earthiness there. As you come further forward along the side of the tongue, you start to get more of those kind of slightly spicy floral aromatic notes coming out of the beer. And as you go round the front curve of the palate, it just gets a little bit lighter and more uh, and, and grassy around there. I would say the green side of the hops does lean a little bit more towards the kind of floral aromatic side of things. It's not resinous, it's not dank enough to be resinous, this beer. Um, and as I say, I've always found the Nelson Soving to be quite a nice spicy um, floral hop, especially when I was down there in New Zealand and you were getting these beers with it fresh. But yeah, it's awesome that. Um, I do wonder actually, with the name of this beer, All Alone, with Everywhere To Go, you know, the Kiwis are known for being big travellers and New Zealand, it's three hours from Australia by plane and, uh, you know, you've got, it, it pretty much is in the middle of nowhere. Uh, and I do wonder if that's a kind of, the name is a sort of subtle reference to the fact that this is the best known um, New Zealand top. They've got a whole variety of them there, but... Um, I do wonder if that name has anything to do with the, the fact that, you know, New Zealand and the Nelson Soviet hop. I'd be curious to know that as well. But, um, yeah, it's, this is a really nice beer, that. And the more and more you drink of it, the more you're going to focus on these nice, um, sort of almost, I don't know if it's right to say, almost saison-y yeasty notes at the front of the tongue. Um, the grassiness of this beer uh, is really nice as well, and um, I like how that goes together. Now, as I always say, the fruity side of the beer is going to come out in that little oily bubble behind the front curve of your tongue. So, at the back of that, you, you, there is a really nice lemony, uh, almost lemony quality to this one. When you move further towards the front of the tongue too, you start to get the white grapey notes that you would expect of the Nelson Sovina, and there's a really nice kind of, it's almost like they're vying for prominence if you like. The green grapey notes are there and they're mixing well with the grassy side of things. It's almost like a little bit of, like a kind of gooseberry flavour as well to be honest with you. And um, it's also the sort of lemony sharper notes to me are coming out a little bit more towards the back of the tongue too. So it's a really interesting kind of um, dance of things that's going on in here. Um, so yeah, just try this beer for yourself and see what you think. This is this is really, really nice actually. And it, as I say, it really reminds me of these cafe IPAs that are becoming popular here in Scandinavia. So yeah. Have a go at it for yourself. Um, in terms of the, the mouthfeel of this one, uh, to me, this is a fairly mid-bodied beer. Carbonation does have a little bit of crispness to it, and I've always found that farmhouse beers have a nice look, have quite a kind of crisp, refreshing carb, uh, carbonation to them. The mouthfeel overall, I would say that it's quite a smooth mouthfeel. It gets a little bit thicker the further you go into the aftertaste, to be honest. Uh, and you've got a nice hoppy bitterness to this one. But, you know, this is it's a New England paleo, this one. You're talking somewhere in the region of 30 IBUs. But the floral aromaticity does make it seem as if it could be just that little bit more. Some nice kind of juicy fruity notes, both coming from the hops and from the yeast. It does have a little bit of that sharpness because of the lime inside of the yeast, to be honest with you. Because um, I'm assuming they will be using a house yeast, of course. But um, yeah, this is just a really nice... Uh, it, it, I think a good way to describe this one might be um, a paleo with a little... A New England paleo with a little bit of a kind of almost saison-y character to it, to be honest. It does have a little bit of that saison character to it, but not quite as... It's kind of almost halfway between a, a New England paleo and a saison, this one, but I like what they've uh, what they've done with this beer. So big thumbs up to the guys at uh, Kent Falls Brewing, and I'm looking forward to trying the other beer that Miles gave me as well. But um, yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. Just have a go at this one for yourself and see what you think. And with 173 different beers, you're not stuck for choice when it comes to this brewery. So yeah, have a, you know... Go there and just have a, an absolute laugh with them. You'll have great fun if you go and visit their tap room. But yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Kent Falls Brewing as well. I'll return to these guys at some point in the next couple of weeks. And beyond that, hopefully I can return to them again. Until the next time, slanja just now, and I'll catch you guys later. Slanja, skull, cheers.